Tuesday. Thank you so much for hanging with us. Molly Karam here solo in Bristol. Stephen A is already down at the site of the Super Bowl. H-Town Max is in his hometown, NYC. Gentlemen, good morning. Molly. What's up? Good morning. How you doing, Molly Molly? I'm good. And I'm, up, I'm hyped for today's show. Just heard that tease, Stephen A. We got a lot to get into. Yes, we this is going to be good. It is. This is going to be good. It is. Let's do it, gentlemen. We tip things off with the latest on the King James Sir Charles trash talk. Here is Barkley last week reacting to LeBron publicly stating the Cavs need another playmaker. LeBron James' comments were blank. Inappropriate, uh, whiny, uh, all the above. The Cleveland Cavaliers... They have given him everything he wanted. They have the highest payroll in NBA history. They, they bought, he wanted J.R. Smith last summer. They paid him. He wanted Shumpert last summer. They bought in Kyle, uh, excuse me, Kyle Clark. They, he's the best player in the world. Does he want all the good players? He don't want to compete. He is an amazing player. But this notion, they're the defending champs. And for him to be trying to hold anything over Dan Gibbons' head, and I love all these, uh, young, these wild punk-ass reporters on television who's afraid to call LeBron. LeBron's a great player and a great guy. It just pisses me off that a guy that great don't want to compete. All right, so here's where it gets really good. After hearing the TNT analyst call him whiny, James decided he has had enough with Barkley's jabs over the years. James clapped back, telling our Dave McMenamin this. Quote, he's a hater. What makes what he says credible because he's on TV? I'm not going to let him disrespect my legacy like that. I'm not the one who threw somebody through a window. I never spit on a kid. I never had unpaid debt in Las Vegas. I never said I'm not a role model. I never showed up to All-Star Weekend on Sunday because I was in Vegas all weekend partying. All I've done for my entire career is represent the NBA the right way. 14 years, never got in trouble, respected the game, print that. I collect one paycheck from this. There's the owner, Griffs, the GM, I'm the player, screw Charles Barkley. Paging Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A., talk to me. Well, this is bad. There's no question about it. And both, and, and both sides have points. Um, in the case of Charles Barkley, LeBron James looks very, very wrong because he crossed the line. LeBron James got personal. Uh, you know, bringing up Vegas, potential debt from Vegas and bringing up stuff with the kids and throwing somebody through a window and all of that other stuff. LeBron James was being criticized about something involving basketball. And he definitely went beyond the pale as far as I'm concerned. I think he crossed the line with how personal he got with Charles Barkley. He definitely crossed the line in that regard. You just don't do that. You don't bring up the kind of stuff that he brought up about Charles Barkley just because you don't like what he's saying about you. That's my initial reaction. But when you dig deeper towards it, you do have to understand if you're Charles Barkley. When you call somebody whiny, when in the past you basically called them a punk, when you question uh, their competitive fervor and what have you, all bets are off in that regard as well because those people are going to interpret it as you taking personal shots at them, which is why LeBron James brought up the word legacy. And then when you think about what he closed with, Max Kellerman, when he says he's the owner, I'm the player, screw Charles Barkley. He was talking about, you know, quotes about Tristan Thompson, J.R. Smith, and others in terms of what Barkley was alluding to. Cleveland has given him everything that he's wanted, et cetera, et cetera, and how LeBron wanted this or LeBron wanted that. When, in fact, Rich Paul, who represents a J.R. Smith, who represents a Tristan Thompson, who's had to fight for those contracts to get those dudes their money, they're looking at it from the standpoint that if LeBron got everything he wanted, he would not have had to complain the way that he's complained periodically over the last two and a half years that he's basically been back in Cleveland. He's had to complain because he hasn't gotten the things that he wanted. So to imply that he just gets everything that he wants, that he's the one running the show, uh, you know, they took offense to it. So, again, it's one of those situations. I think that LeBron James got a bit too personal. I think it was a bit excessive. I think he was wrong for doing that. But at the same time, if a cat's going to come at you and question your character in that fashion, you do have a right to stand up and defend yourself by any means necessary. I don't really think that there's a wrong party here, but I do think that it's going a bit too far 
particularly with some of the personal stuff that LeBron James brought up. Because there were certainly things on the basketball court that LeBron James could easily attack about Barkley because Barkley doesn't have the basketball resume that LeBron has. LeBron did not have to go to that point. Now all bets are off because we don't know what the hell Barkley is going to say. And Barkley obviously could say a lot, particularly if he gets personal. LeBron may not know what Barkley knows about him. Very dangerous game. My reaction is LeBron left Charles Barkley in flames. I mean, he left them in flames. And there's some kind of joy that people get or glee that people take in the critic getting criticized in a way that just leaves them in flames. And so the, the, my initial reaction is like, oh, snap, you see what LeBron said about Barkley? Oh, he got him, he got him, he got him, he got him. Here's the difference. Charles Barkley, because he gives you the straight dope, even if you think he's a dope at times, he doesn't bite his tongue, is maybe the most popular critic on TV, period. He gets paid a lot of money to give you his opinion, the unvarnished truth as he sees it, precisely because he won't bite his tongue. Now, LeBron doesn't get paid to do that. Doesn't mean he can't offer his opinion on Charles Barkley or anything he chooses. And he makes valid points, in fact. But LeBron here is making ad hominem attacks, meaning he's attacking Charles Barkley personally because he doesn't like what Charles Barkley is saying. There's an expression, don't murder the messenger. He is murdering the messenger. I don't know, and people, and Shaq even does this with Barkley on the air sometimes. Shaq was a greater player than Barkley, more championships, etc. And sometimes Shaq, in the argument, whether Shaq is winning or losing, and those guys are amazing on TV together, it's an incredible show, but Shaq will sometimes just pull that trump card. He'll pull that card out and say, how many champions, you know, basically, I've won championships, I'm a greater player, you should stop talking. Stephen A., you and me didn't win any championships in the NBA, but we criticize these guys. I mean, the job of, of, a, of, of a critic in the media is to give you, is to tell you what they see, is to look with a critical eye and tell you what they see. And their own background may be pointed out by the targets of their criticism at times to kind of undercut their credibility, but that doesn't change what they're saying. I would have been more convinced by LeBron's arguments if he would have gone at what the content of what Barkley st said instead of impugning Barkley's character. Coming up next on First Take, Tom Brady was just